Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya al mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'in. Respected brothers and sisters, welcome to this week's Ikna Ailaf Understanding the Quran series. Inshallah, we'll be continuing the study of Surah Al An'am uh, with verses 106 to 117. And inshallah, today's session will be delivered by Brother Shahid Faruqi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Audu billahi minash shaitani rajim bismillahi rahmani rahim. Dear brothers and sisters, as we have discussed last to last time, this is our third session. In the first session, we have discussed that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human being, then give them intellect and also guidance. Allah provided them an ability, every human being, that he or she can determine what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is evil. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent Adam alayhi salam from the paradise to the earth, he taught him the knowledge through which Ibrahim alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam, and his wife Hawa alayhi salam can recognize who their God is, who their creator is, sustainer, and lawgiver is. Though they were trapped by shaitan, but then they realized, they regret, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgive him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them and then sent them to the earth as a uh, caretaker of the earth. And their responsibility was that establish a human society which is based on justice and, uh, and, and mutual respect. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed shaitan rajim that he is free to misguide, deviate, and losing the right path. He can misguide them, the children of Adam. He can deviate the children of Adam. He can make lose the right path. And this both this whole equation, being shaitan there, bringing challenges to the children of Adam. So for a, for a while, children of Adam stays, stay in, on the right path. But then slowly, shaitan became uh, successful to misguide them, to take them off from the right path. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started sending the reminders through prophets and through his scriptures. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued it till the time come of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and Allah assigned him in Mecca where he was born and grew up. After 40 years, he spent time with his fellow human beings in Mecca. He was from the noble family. Everyone, uh, everyone uh, witness that he is sadiq and amin, honest and trustworthy. He never speaks lie. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remind them who their Lord is. And we should keep in our mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all human beings in the beginning and different uh, towns, the stories of different towns with their prophets, Allah mentioned, majority of them were Muslims, but then they lost their way. So here it is the same thing. Bani Ismail were the worshippers of one God. But then they lost and they bringing 
idols into the Kaaba and they were claiming they were the one who make connection, our connection to the one God. And they started committing shirk. In these ayahs, we're going to see that the, the communication, the arguments happening in the Makkan society between Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and between Sahaba and Makkan followers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the, those who are opposing the dawa of oneness of God from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. So this is the, the scene we are reading about where there is some arguments going on. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillah rahman rahim ittabi'u ma uhiya ilayka mir rabbik la ilaha illa hu wa'arid anil mushrikeen walaw sha allahu ma ashraku wa ma ja'alnaka alayhim hafiza wa ma anta alayhim bi wakil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or addressing Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he should follow what was revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized there is no God but he. And he asked Al Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, turn away from the polytheist. So what happened is, after giving so many proofs and arguments for God's oneness, to this point in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he should simply turn away from them. Do not waste his time. And this is a general uh, uh, strategy could be for those who are busy actively uh, playing their role as da'is, as da'is of Allah, who inviting their friends and folks living around them, working around them, towards what is right, towards the reality, towards the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the only Lord, that they should, they should stay away from those who always insist of their wrongdoing and thinking that this is right. Then we should not waste time on them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we did not appoint you as a guardian over them, and you are not a manager over them. When prophets receive their assignment as prophethood, they are always very sincere to their nation because they were part of the nation. They born, they grew up in that nation. So they were very sincere and they worked so hard to their death to asking and guiding people and there, for them, is their failure if any one of them did not pay attention on their dawa, on their invitation. They feel so bad. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding here, three, three realities to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number one, he is not a guardian over them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guardian. And they are old enough, adult enough, they have enough knowledge, they have enough proofs to believe or reject. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet sallallahu that he's not their wakil, he's not their manager to manage whether they're going to rejecting or, or address or accepting the guidance coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is every individual's moral responsibility to accept the guidance and be a good person on the right path provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guided by prophets, or reject it and make himself a permanent resident of hellfire. This dunya is a test place. This dunya is Darul Imtihan, where everyone have to do their acts, do their deeds based on their understanding of right or wrong, good or evil. 
and there is no one going to hold their hands and say, let me take you to the right path. No, every adult sane person who has intellect, who get the knowledge, who get the uh, proofs, this is his or her responsibility to either accept it or reject it. At the same time, this matter is ultimately lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That whether he guides someone or he let them go astray. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in other ayahs, we will inshallah discuss it. In this part where, which is in front of you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also ask the companions of Prophet Sallallahu that do not insult those they call upon besides Allah, lest they insult Allah out of hostility and ignorance. Which means that if you curse them, if you revile their false idols, false gods, which is, which is you have right to do it, but just to save yourself that you're not making them, pushing them, Towards where they're going to start insulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of their hostility and their ignorance. Then Allah also made something which is we're going to connect now what happened on the first day of Adam's creation. Allah says we made attractive to every community their deeds and it means their bad deeds. Then to their Lord is their return and he will inform them what they used to do. So in this specific sentence, we find that Allah is saying that he made attractive to every community their deeds. What does that mean? If you remember that on the first day of creation of Adam alayhi salam, shaitan asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give him a chance. And Allah gave him the time till day of judgment. And then he claimed and bring his plan that he is going to make children of Adam their wrongdoing seem, their wrongdoing made to seem fair unto them. So whatever they do, if they're doing evil by knowing this is evil and wrong, if they continue on them, then it's not like all of a sudden uh, their house is going to be shaky and they will have uh, heavy rain or mountains going to be fall on them. It's not going to happen. They will continue. They will spend whatever time Allah has set for those individuals or for those communities collectively, regardless how they are hostile and ignorant in their livelihood, in their lifestyle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them enough time to continue doing this. And this is where, where a lot of communities got tricked. They think that whatever we are doing now is going to be good. That's why we are living. We are living good. We have prosperity. We are growing up. We can attack on any community or nation. We can destroy them. No one going to hold our hands. We have most powers. We have very uh, sophisticated uh, tools and weapons. We can destroy anyone. We can kill anyone. So we are free. And that is why we believe that God is with us. That's why we are able to do whatever we like to do, regardless they are doing against God's will or not. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they swear by Allah with their most solemn oaths that if a miracle were to come to them, they would, they would believe in it. Say the miracles are only with Allah. But how do you know? Even if it did come, they still would not believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning, mentioning their, uh, their way of uh, arguments that regardless, regardless, even angels come, 
even a dead body started speaking still they are not going to believe because they decided not to believe what is right and coming from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we're going to recite now these two ayahs wa nuqallibu afidatahum wa absarahum kama lam yu'minu bihi awwala marratin wa nadaruhum fi tughyanihim ya'mahun walau annana nazzalna ilayhimu al-malaikata wa kallamuhumu al-mawta wa hasharna alayhim وحشرنا عليهم كل شيء قبل ما كانوا ليؤمنوا الا ان يشاء الله الا ان يشاء الله ولكن اكثرهم يجهلون الله سبحانه وتعالى says and we turn away their hearts and their visions they refuse to believe in it the first time and we leave them blundering in their rebellion so what happened is as we said this is every one of us choice so this is their choice the mushrikeen mushrikeen in makka that their choice is they refuse it in first time and once they refuse it and by knowing it that this is the right this is the truth then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep it happening and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make sure their hearts and their visions also continue supporting them in their refusal and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use this word that blundering in their rebellion fi tughyanihim yamahu means they are fully under that and by by providing them all sustenance all provisions they continue believing that we are powerful we are rich we have all resources nothing is going to hurt us so we will continue be rebellion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says if one if we send down the angels to them and the dead spoke to them and we gathered all things before them they still would not believe unless allah wills but most of them are ignorant so it's but still at the same time the more responsibility is going to be on those individuals or collectively on nations or communities who refuse the reality that allah is the only lord and rub caretaker sustainer and lawgiver for every human being living and walking on the earth wa kadhalika ja'alna li kulli nabiyyi aduwan shayt shayatin al ins wal jinn yuhi ba'duhum ila ba'din zukhraful qawli ghurura walaw sha'a rabbuka ma fa'aluh fadarhum wa ma yaftarun ولتزغائليه <تصفيق> والذين اتيناهم الكتاب يعلمون انه منزل من ربك بالحق فلا تكونن من الممترين likewise we have assigned for every prophet an enemy human and jinn devils inspiring one another with fancy words in order to deceive this means there are enemies of prophets every prophet has enemies among the human beings and from the jinn they were supporting each other they were making each other happy that whatever they are doing they are doing right so they pushing each other 
towards their final destination, which is hell, by supporting each other in this world, by also opposing prophets and their dawah, their invitation towards oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But had your Lord will, they would not have done it. So leave them to their fabrications. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again mentioning it, that all, this world is a free world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, give human and jinn both free will. Whatever they decide, they can decide that imma shakiru wa imma kafura. They can be thankful, grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they can be ungrateful and become kafir. Means ungrateful, whatever Allah is giving them, Allah is the one who created them, who is giving them sustenance, provisions, who is their lawgiver, but they can decide that we are not going to accept Allah as our Lord. <clears throat> and Allah says, if I will, I will make everyone to follow what I want them to follow. But that's not the purpose of creating earth and the rest of the universe. This is the place of a test. Shall I seek a judge other than Allah when he is the one who revealed to you the book explained in detail? Those to whom we gave the book know that it is the truth revealed from your Lord. So do not be of those who doubt. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, uh, with, by, the, uh, by the saying of Prophet sallallahu asking that shall I seek a judge other than Allah? When he is the one who revealed to you the book, explain in detail. So Allah is the only judge between Prophet Sallallahu and those who are opposing him. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala also reminding the people of the book, means Christians and Jews, that we gave the book. No, those who we whom we gave the book know that it is the truth revealed from your Lord. Their books, their scriptures, their knowledge of the scripture, telling them. That this is the right, this is the one they were waiting for. In one of the stories from Ahadi's true story about that one of the Sahabiya Radil Anha, she mentioned that when she was with his father, his uncle came, both of them were Jews. His uncle came to visit his father and ask him that, what do you think? about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and her father replied that he is the one who we are we were waiting for he is the right person and then her uncle asked her father then what are we going to do and her father replied that we will oppose him till our death no matter what so this is what they were doing mentioned here to those to whom we gave the book now that it is the truth revealed from your Lord. So do not be of those who doubt. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَتْ وَرَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا مُبَدِّلًا لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَإِن تُطِي أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُجِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ the word of your Lord has been completed in truth and justice. There is no changing to his words. He is the hearer, the knower. If you were to obey most of those on earth, they would divert you from Allah's path. They follow nothing but assumptions and they only conjecture. Your Lord knows best who estrays from his path and he knows best the guided ones. Dear brothers and sisters, this dunya, uh, people living on this earth are divided into two groups. Either those who are already misguided and those who are guided and this whole struggle between the guided one and misguided one and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words of Allah has been completed 
and they are the truth one and they are the most justified words what allah has in this last scripture which is called quran is the last scripture from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nobody can adulterate it nobody can make any changes in it everyone have to follow it if anyone looking for the truth truth is in this book if anyone looking for justice this book is the source of justice whatever the rest of the world try best to find the justice if they ignore this book there will be no justice in their society we heard a lot in our society where we are living in united states and rest of the world there are a lot of organizations movements uh, political initiatives for bringing justice justice for women justice for children justice for inmates who are in the correctional facilities but all of them continuously doing but at the same time they are failing people want to be everyone should be equal everyone should have equal resources access to resources everyone want to have a equal opportunities but we know in reality is not happening why because this world avoiding the real truth the source of justice al quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you were to obey most of those on earth they would divert you from allah's path what does that mean we need to be on the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for that we have to get the knowledge of the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because islam based on knowledge whoever no more no better he is or she is going to be better muslim a person who is trying to put some kind of surety that he or she is going on the right path towards her or his final destination paradise jannat al firdaus because rest of it is all assumptions all assumptions reality coming only from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah says at the end that allah knows best who strays from his path and he knows best the guided ones how are we going to know who who are really straying allah put all those signs and the qualities weaknesses of those who can stray or who are straying and those who can be guided is everything clearly explained with details in the book of allah al quran nothing hidden and this is the time where everyone bringing their own ideas of sexual orientation of their lifestyle and asking the law authorities supreme court that recognize it make a law and at the same time allah explaining what is right and what life is say we should adopt and follow may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to keep ourselves on the right path may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us knowledge of his book understanding of his book ability to follow it practice it and deliver its message to those friends and folks who are living around us working around us studying around us this is the only path we can get guarantee to get to the heaven paradise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Jazakallah khair, uh, Shahid. Um, so inshallah, we'll take some questions. So if uh, the audience have any questions, please do submit them in writing and inshallah, we'll, we'll take them. Um, the first question, inshallah, um, we talked about how the, the followers of the previous prophets um, lost their way. Um, what were the reasons why 
the followers of the previous prophets lost their ways. And what are the lessons for us as Muslims living here in America? What must we do to ensure that we don't lose the way? As we know, doctors working in the hospitals and software engineers, engineers, pilots flying their planes, most of these professions, highly paid professions, can um, are the one which adopted by highly qualified persons. But these hospitals, these companies always acquired them to continue study and keep upgrading themselves. So that's why every doctor has to sit, even he became doctor, he became surgeon, still he or she has to sit in exams time to time during their lifetime the as long as they are practicing as doctor as long as they are flying the planes as long as they are producing the softwares why is that because knowledge is keeping them on the right track knowledge keeping them on their profession as a well knowledgeable up-to-date person same lesson we should learn that we need to keep updating ourselves by keep going back and forth to Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu by reading Islamic literature. We need to continue study and continue uh, readdressing our weaknesses and, and keep checking upon ourselves that am I doing right? Am I on the right path? Do I have right understanding? And sources are available, alhamdulillah. But those sources are available for the purpose. And purpose is update yourself and keep upgrading yourself. That's the only way we can keep ourselves on the right path because shaitan never sits idle. He never takes rest. 24-7 he will continue working on. And we can see it, right? Suppose I'm going to pick up the phone because I want to read something. But at the same time, we will find there are three text messages and also there are 10 posts on our different chat groups. If I, instead of going directly to that, what I would like to read or recite, and I will fall in those traps of messages and, and posts, I'm going to lost my time and I'm going to lose my attention, what I was trying to do. So it's very tricky world now. Very tricky world. We need to keep ourselves um, attentive and concentrate who we are, what are we doing, and how we can continue walking on the right path. Just have to look here, Brother Shahid. Inshallah, uh, next question. Um, one of the things um, we um, heard about today in, in, in the verses was the, the the words we made attractive to every community their deeds um what should be our relationship as believers between ourselves and our good deeds what should be the relationship between ourselves and our bad deeds um so that um you know should we be attracted when we do a good deed is, is it right to feel good when we do something good or is there something wrong in that um again we have to keep checking upon ourselves through the knowledge of quran and sunnah that what we think is right is it right so we have to get approval from quran sunnah and practice of sahaba radiallahu without keep checking on we might fall in the trap which is something which is we are doing may not be correct may not be in right direction but it seems good for us this is what shaitan's trap is so stay in touch with quran and sunnah and being in a good company where sincere brothers and sisters around you to notify you if you are falling in the traps and doing something wrong thinking and believing that it is good and this is what exactly happening but at the same time as prophet sallallahu says when you do good you should feel happy that you do good but 
you know, still, shaitan make everything very tricky that you may following something which may not be right, may not be correct. And that is why Islam is based on knowledge. At the same time, another criteria is when we do bad, should we feel regret? Do we feel bad about it? And are we willing to correct it? If these two things keep happening, then we can save ourselves. Otherwise, we can see people living around us, uh, communities, uh, past nations who took this responsibility of giving dawah, a responsibility of being an ambassador of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth. They are living around us. They were having their religious places. They were having their businesses. They are on the government. They are on, on a high level lifestyle. And they are thinking this is best they are doing. And God is happy with them. And they are not realizing what they are doing wrong. Is it right or wrong? Because they lost that ability as a past nation. But those past nations are continue living on the earth. And Allah keep them so we can have witness, we can see them, and we can learn from their mistakes. Jazakallah khair. Inshallah, this will be the last question. Jazakallah. Um, as we think about implementing in our lives what we learn from these sessions, what would be your advice to us? What can we do practically from the verses we've studied today and implement it in our life. Maybe just one or two tips that, you know, maybe we can just go away and, and try to implement. So two things for take away with us is number one, that we should, because we see the whole scene, right? Where Prophet Sallallahu and his followers are argumenting, interacting with their friends and folks who are living in that society, who are on the wrong path who are opposing Prophet ﷺ, and they were in constant struggle. So first thing is, we all should be part of that constant struggle which Prophet ﷺ asked us to continue doing it. And he said, even if there is an ayah come to you from me, then you should deliver it to others who may do it better, practice it better than you. So that's first thing I think we should involve. Once we involve, once we become part of this struggle, every ayah, every ayah when we read, we find it is related to us. I think this is the only thing I can give. I'm trying to implement on myself to be a very active in my community, in my neighborhood. And I'm doing my best whatever I can do. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me health and skill to do much more better. And be a part of the struggle Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started 1444 years before. Jazakallah khair, Brother Shahid, for sharing these uh, very important lessons uh, with, with the group here today. Um, I mean to your du'as, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to become followers of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of implementing the deen in, in this world. Um, uh, with that, we'll end. We'll resume, inshallah, 9 p.m. Eastern time next Wednesday. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiraku wa atubu ilayk. Audhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asr inna l-insana lafi khusr. Illa ladhina amun wa ala salihat. Wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. Sadaqallahu nazim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah.